Are there prophetic signs in the heavens? Hello again and welcome to Prophetic Perspective. We have Lee Brainerd, our good friend, again in from the north down to the Dallas area for us to talk about signs in the heavens. You know, fellas, there was a comedian, Bill Ingvall, that used to say as part of his shtick, here's your sign. And we have so many people today who are looking for a sign in the heavens and all sorts of other places. And so we talked just recently about the solar eclipse that happened on April 8th. And many were hearkening to that being a great sign in the heavens. And yet we know that the Lord uh, put lights in the heavens to mark the seasons. And you were sharing with us a little bit about that, Lee. What do you have to say about the signs in the heavens? Well, I've asked people, I said, okay, show me biblical precept, biblical principle, or biblical precedence for looking to blood moons, eclipses, things of that nature as signs that have prophetic meaning. In fact, definite prophetic meaning. Mm -hmm. Well, people would keep pointing me to Genesis 1.14, and there we read, then God said, let there be lights in the firmament or the expanse of the heavens to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years. And they would say, see, we've got stuff in the heavens going on and some of it is for signs and some of it's for seasons. No, you can't do that because uh, there's only two treatments of this passage that you're going to see if you look up the Old Testament commentaries where the scholars are going to deal with the actual Hebrew. And one of them is that this is a hendiadis, which that means signs and seasons are two things for, the, for one thing. We say that in English. Um, he's tried and true. Where you got two words that are one package with one sense. Or the other one is that this says, let them be for signs, for seasons, for days, and for years. This is the only two options that we have. It's like God has created the universe as a giant clock, and it's perfectly timed to give us the seasons and the times. We know when the crops are based on the moon. We know the seasons, when to plant and when, when to reap. And I think another thing, too, that he did that is it proves that there's a creator because of the orderliness of the universe ticking away like a timepiece is that we know there's an author and we know there's a God. So it really kind of goes back to general revelation, right, that everybody is with that excuse because we know there's a God because we know there's a creator due to the orderliness of nature. Correct? Amen. And when we get yeah. to the end of this era, this in Genesis is the stated creation purpose of the heavens. Okay. Mm. So when the 6,000 years of man's trial comes to an end and we move on in the eternal purposes of God, this passage is going to go on for millions and billions and trillions of years, the creation purpose. There will be no signs of judgment. You know, we talked about how the eclipse itself was timed and people could predict exactly when it was going to occur on a particular part of the earth. But we've also seen in recent years, uh, some have hearkened to the blood moons, and yet yeah. they know exactly when they're going to occur because it is a regular occurrence when the moon has a little bit of a coloration as the Earth's atmosphere uh, diffuses the light. And yet I think the scripture is talking about something completely different when it talks about the blood or the moon turning blood red right. and the sun being darkened. We have not seen that in a cataclysmic way that is pointed to in the great fulfillment of that prophecy. And that's, that's the day of Christ. When Jesus returns at the second coming at the end of the tribulation, it's a day like no other day. His sign is in the sky. Nature is totally up in upheaval. And so that, that bears the question then, Lee, how do we tell the difference between what is the orderly set signs in the sky and how do we not turn to them for our prophetic information? How do we identify those signs in the sky that are meant to be prophetic according to prophecy? Mm. Well, the signs that are regular occurring things, whether we're looking at eclipses, whether we're looking at blood moons, these are signs that we serve an amazing God. Yes. That's all they are. They're signs that God is orderly, that He marks time, and that He is the God of the ages. But when we come to the signs of the last days, this is nature out of order. This is uh, nature okay. run amok. It's nature broken. Wow. I used to have a pastor that said he had been a farmer at a young age. He said I, he would only put a post in the ground on a certain time of the month when the moon was in a certain phase. He said that the, the post will always shake unless you plant it at that time of the month. Interesting. And I said, okay, I, it's old farmer's, uh, I guess, uh, sense of wisdom. But I find that some Christians hearken to almost a, a Christian astrology yes. in that they're following these signs, looking for some spectacular revelation. And, and that's not what 
we are to do in terms of the natural order. It is to order our days, our months, our years, yes, but not for us to chase after the latest speculation and sensationalism. Exactly. And what I've observed when people start running after the cool theories that involve signs in the heavens and uh, fancy astronomical calculations that try and calculate the rapture or the second coming or the judgment of America, when they've gone through this cycle three, four times, they start to lose confidence in Jesus, in the rapture, yeah, and in Bible prophecy. Point. Yeah, well, there were Christians mm. a few years ago that were saying, well, maybe those Mayans had it right because they had a, <laughs> a calendar based on the stars, and, and maybe that's when the earth's going to end. And I thought, let me get this straight. You're not going to go to the Word of God, but you're going to hearken to a Mayan calendar for the time of Christ's coming. To me, it seemed like nonsense. So that's the question then, Lee, is how do we advise those who are watching to tell the difference between what is natural and what is prophetic when it comes to signs of the times? And where should we be getting our hope? Because there's, like Tim said, too many Christians getting their hope for the latest astrological type event instead of putting their faith in the Bible. Well, one thing I would encourage them to do is let the Bible be its own interpreter. Become a deep student of the scriptures. If you start taking the proof texts that people are using, like Luke 21, 25, the signs in the heavens for the day of the Lord, and you do a full research of every passage that mentions the day of the Lord and every passage that mentions those signs in the heavens, you're going to get a balanced perspective on the subject, and then you're not going to be swayed by people that exploit such a passage to use for uh, looking for prophetic signs of the rapture, and we're looking to things like eclipses. Well, obviously, these young fellows here have modern devices where they can search all sorts of information. I'm old school, so mine is in print, but nevertheless, I have access to experts like Lee to help me understand even the original Greek and Hebrew. There are so many wealth of resources. Lee, how could folks get in touch with you and follow your ministry and your own research at SoothKeep? Well, they can go to my website, which is SoothKeep.info, or they can go to my YouTube channel, SoothKeep. Well, obviously, we've always advocated that you should look for scriptural truth. In other words, if the plain sense of scripture makes sense, look for no other sense, including in the heavens, lest you end up with nonsense. Amen. Folks, we hope that you will keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. And only as you're looking for him should we be looking up, because indeed, our redemption is drawing nigh. Godspeed.